Alberta Premier Rachel Notley announced that she was pulling her province from the Pan-Canadian Climate Action Plan last night. Why? Because of Ottawa's handling of the Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion. Yesterday, the Federal Court of Appeal quashed construction approvals for the project after finding there wasn't enough consideration of the pipeline's impact on marine life and the court said the government didn't meet its obligation to meaningfully consult with Indigenous people. Notley is now calling on the feds to appeal the court decision and to call an emergency session of Parliament to handle the issue. So if the government complies with her demands, will Alberta get back on board with the climate plan? Alberta Premier Rachel Notley is in Edmonton. Hi, Premier Notley. Nice to see you again. Thanks for coming on the show. Good to see you. So, Premier, why do you think an appeal to the Supreme Court is the best path forward here? Well, actually, it's one of the paths forward. Quite frankly, uh, what we have to do is change the current situation. The, uh, the uh, implications of the, of, the, uh, of the Federal Court of Appeal decision as it stands now, left unresponded to, means that uh, we're, we're way too close to being in a position where we simply will not ever be able uh, to get a pipeline to Tidewater um, or, frankly, to do other major projects that involve um, uh, moving uh, non-renewable resources uh, in a significant new way uh, off of Canadian coastline. So uh, it, it needs to be addressed. So I'm just confused, though, because are you saying that, um, they, that, the, that the federal government should comply with the ruling and address the two issues that, that the court specifically points out or make an appeal to the Supreme Court? And do you think making that appeal would be a faster route to getting the pipeline built than just complying with what the court said? Well, honestly, we're still getting advice on whether, in fact, the uh, federal government or it, whether it's advisable for the federal government to engage in a two-track process. But, uh, you know, I think that uh, the, the, the difficulty is, I mean, we, we do believe that uh, they need to provide uh, to the Indigenous communities the level of consultation and accommodation that they deserve. Uh, but that in and of itself should not, uh, should not be uh, something that ultimately kills the project overall. However, this idea of starting back from scratch with respect to the NEB is it's it's just too much and there's just too much uncertainty and we just have no idea how long that would possibly take uh, so we think that in addition to uh, considering an appeal to the Supreme Court of Canada the federal government should also be looking at legislative solutions uh, with respect to the process around the NEB um, quite honestly uh, you know it was it was it was broken it's a bit of a, a heavy-handed approach uh, but quite frankly it's needed in order to fix the uh, mess that was you know, effectively created by the Harper, uh, uh, Harper government. But are you saying then that the NEB should not take into account the impact of, of the increased tanker traffic on, on marine life in the area? I think that the issue of uh, how you address uh, the impact uh, of uh, this kind of tanker traffic on marine life needs to be addressed, but it doesn't mean that you start the whole process over again, which is effectively what's being recommended uh, through uh, a reading, in our view, of, of the Court of Appeal uh, decision. You know, to be clear, the, the tanker traffic coming in and out of Burrard Inlet represents about 2% of the tanker traffic. And the other 98% of the tanker traffic coming in and out of Burrard Inlet does not require six or seven or eight years of review and hearings in order for it to happen. And the fact of the matter is, is that our energy industry is one of our most profitable in uh, industries with one of our most profitable exports to the whole country and we have to find a way to export it out of our country without uh, relying on the good graces of the United States. So if the government does comply with your demands, one, appealing the decision and two, recalling an emergency session, is that good enough for you to sign back onto the federal climate plan? Absolutely. If we get this back on track and we see that there is real action going forward to get this pipeline back on track so that we can actually see a way and a path to getting it built, then of course we'd be right back there. We've always said uh, taking action on climate change is fundamentally important, but it must be paired with strong economic uh, planning, strong economic uh, fundamentals, uh, because quite frankly you can't do one without the other. You can't throw working people under the bus uh, in order to to achieve one, outset, or one outcome, just as you can't pursue economic objectives to the exclusion of understanding the need to be responsible on the environment. Uh, but as things stand now, we cannot sign on to the additional uh, asks of the federal climate plan uh, without getting a pipeline to Tidewater. It is just not 
uh, it's not a climate change plan that will work. I just want to be clear, though, what, what are the parameters for you to then go back onto the plan? Is it that they comply exactly with those two demands, or is it that construction starts on the pipeline? What is it? Well, you know, we'll have to uh, look into it uh, in, in more detail once we've had a chance to analyze the decision. But in effect, what we need to do is make sure that uh, we have a, a certainty around the pipeline getting built and there being a beginning point and an end point. Quite frankly, as things sit right now, uh, our view of the interpretation of the Federal Court of Appeal decision is that we have no way of knowing if this will ever get done. And that's not acceptable. What does, though, Premier, you pulling out, your province pulling out of the climate climate plan actually accomplish? I ask because your climate plan is actually in step with the federal plan until 2021, where instead of raising the carbon price to the federal mm -hmm. level of $40, you'll just keep it at the current $30 price. So isn't it kind of an empty threat until then? Uh, I, I don't really think so. I mean, time flies in that respect, and uh, and and the federal government know, needs to know if, if we're on side or if we're not on side. And quite honestly, it comes down to this fundamental issue. Will this climate plan work? I mean, climate combating climate change is very, very important. Having a sound, thoughtful, well-balanced climate change plan that can reach objectives while at the same time accommodating the need to support working people and support economic prosperity is important. And moving to 40 or $50 is fundamentally flawed if the province of Alberta cannot move its major commodity to Canadian ports. But and so the two are tied hand in hand. It's a couple years away, yes, but as we see, you have to start understanding and planning for these things uh, in advance. And Aren't so I think it is uh, important and it is part of an overall approach. Sorry to interrupt, pardon me. Uh, I, but aren't you also making the same argument that your critics in the province have made towards your climate plan? I mean, you, you said you needed a carbon tax or a price on carbon because that's what's necessary to get a pipeline built. That's the exact same thing the federal government is saying. And now you're, you're saying that their argument needs to be fought. Uh, no, I mean, first of all, our climate leadership plan, to be clear, was something that we brought in as the government of Alberta before this government was even elected. And uh, certainly we weren't at that point expecting that we th that's what was going to happen with had there been a, co a conservative government re-elected. We brought in our climate leadership plan for a number of reasons, because it's the right thing to do and because we needed to support our energy industry as they devo developed and adopted more and more sustainable practices, diversified their work, diversified our energy industry as a whole, all those things. Uh, so that that's what our plan was about. But signing on to the additional demands of the of the federal climate plan, uh, a conversation that started soon after, that was where we said, okay, well, in order to do that, as Canada's biggest emitter and Canada's biggest energy producer, and of course the single per capita contributor to Canada's economy, that we needed to be able to pair that with a strategy that would get us full value for our resources. That means getting our pipelines, getting our product to Canadian Tidewater and through Canadian Tidewater, and the two must go together in order to be able to afford those additional costs that are that come through the federal plan. Okay, I'm out of time. I have to leave it there. Thanks a lot, Premier. Thank you.